Good morning. Hello. Hello. We can hear you just fine. Go ahead, please. Okay. Our scripture this morning comes from Jeremiah 29, verses 10 through 13. For thus said the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Maybe. Um, <clears throat> I want to uh, read two passages of scripture as we get started this morning. Um, the first one is Jeremiah chapter 29, 11, verses 10 through 13. And then I will be reading uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 28. Um, I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Either you can follow along um, with the words on the screen or you can um, read from whatever text that you would like to. And the word of God reads from Jeremiah chapter 29, beginning at verse number 10. For thus saith the Lord, only when Babylon 70 years are completed will I visit you and I will fulfill to you my promises and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not, to, and not for your harm to give you a future with a hope. Verse number 12 says, then will you call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. And when you search for me, you will find me if you seek me with your whole heart. And moving on to Romans chapter, uh, chapter 8, verses 29, 28 and 29. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. For those who he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. For the time that we have today, I would like to preach from the subject or preach uh, from the thought, stay on the plan. Stay on the plan. If you're sitting next to somebody or if you know somebody um, who may need to hear this word, I encourage that you um, buzz them and tell them to get on. Um, if you know somebody who might need a word of encouragement this morning in order to keep on running to see what the end might be, I would encourage you to tell them to speedily get here so that they can hear what thus saith the Lord. Let us pray. Spirit of living God, we thank you for your presence in this place. Now, God, I ask that you will fall fresh on this, your servant. God, minister unto me, even as I minister unto your people. For God, if you don't speak in this place, your people won't receive a word. We pray that your word might go forth in this moment so that you might be glorified. The people of God might be edified and Satan might be horrified. In Jesus' name, amen. So we find ourselves having made it to another week um, with a lot of unrest going on in the country and a lot of unrest going on in the world. Um, and as we try to seek what it is that God is saying to us, uh, I believe that um, with marrying these two patches together today, that we will walk away from here encouraged to stay on the plan. Now, I know for many of us, um, you know, who are waiting on unemployment, who are waiting for Governor Hogan and um, our county executive in order to, you know, open up Montgomery County and, you know, get things back to going. Oftentimes in life, we find ourselves in situations where we ask some of the following questions. What am I doing with my life? Where do I go from here? What's next? What's my next move? Oftentimes in life, as we go through transition and oftentimes in life, we find ourselves in some uncomfortable situations. These are oftentimes the questions that we end up asking ourselves. Not unusual questions. Um, and unlike many of the saved and sanctified folks um, who believe that, that there's a problem with questioning God, I'm a firm believer that it's okay to question God. 
Because in that questioning of God and in that questioning of seeking after God, we oftentimes find ourselves in a, in a season of growth. We oftentimes find ourselves getting clarity in those areas where we feel like things may be out of control. We find ourselves getting understanding and getting assurances in the midst of what might seem like uncertain circumstances. And so for those of you all who may be questioning, for those of you all who have come out of a season of questioning, and for those of you all who may be going into a season of questioning, I'm so glad you're here today so that I can encourage you with the word of God to run on a little bit further to see what the end might be. And you may say to yourself, well, Reverend Holt, you know, it seems like I've been questioning God for so long, and I just, I feel like God is not hearing me. I've been asking God for something for so long, but, but, but I feel like I'm not getting the answer that I'm looking for. I've been seeking after God for this, this, this person or this thing or this job promotion, but it seems like I'm not in a position or that God is not answering me in the way that I would want him to. If that is you, I am so glad that you are here this morning so that I can encourage you to stay on the plan. Now, now, now you may ask, well, well, why is it that I should stick to God's plan? God, God's plan hadn't been working for me. God's plan is moving too slow for me. God, God's plan doesn't seem to work in the time frame in which I want, me, that I want it to work in. And so, Reverend Holt, why is it that I should stick to the plan? And for those of you all who, who find yourself in that position, and, and I will almost say it's probably more than who are, who are willing to admit, uh, the Spirit of God is saying to you today over, over Zoom and over Facebook, and over whatever platform that you're watching this on, that sir or ma'am, you need to stick to the plan. Don't stick to your plan, because your plan hasn't worked. Your plan has caused you heartache. Your plan has caused you headache. Your plan has caused your, your, your waistline to explain, uh, expand. Your, your, uh, your, your plan has caused you a worry, doubt, and anxiety. And what the word of God is saying to us today, if you would but stick to the plan, that God has for you, I guarantee you that things will begin to change. And so in our time together, I want to encourage us from uh, the word of uh, Jeremiah chapter 29 and from the words of Romans 8 and 28 about why it is important that we stay on the planet. And, and the three quick things, you know, I'm a three-point preacher, there are three quick things that I want to point out to us as reasons why we need to stay on the planet. For those of you all who are questioning, for those of you all who are seeking, for those of you all who are frustrated, for those of you all who are disgusted, even for those of you all who at this moment are contemplating walking away from a true and a living God. I came here for you today to encourage you to move on a little bit further. The first reason why we need to stay on a plan is because God knows the full plan that he has for us. Now, oftentimes when we go and when we get to the point where we begin to question God and when we get to the point where we begin to try to understand the, the, the method of the madness that God has in our life, oftentimes we get frustrated because uh, 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 God does not share the totality of what the plan is. Can, 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 can you imagine, just use your sanctified imagination and, and imagine if God had shared the totality of what he has for you in your life. Would you be ready? For many of us, if we be honest with ourselves, the answer will be no. And, and let, me, let, let me just uh, further blow your mind a little bit and, and let me just further put it in context what we're going to talk about today. The reality is God knew from the beginning of time when your mother and your father were going to get together, uh, God knew uh, whether you were going to be a C-section baby or whether you were going to be an, a, a natural birth baby or whether you were going to be an at-home birth. God knew uh, uh, who your siblings were. God knew who your parents were. God knew who, where you want to go to first grade, through fifth grade, through uh, 12th grade, college, career. God knew all of that. That's the, that's the, that's the power of the God that we serve. That, that's the anointing and, and, and the ability of the God that we serve. From the time that you took your first breath to the time you take your last breath, God knows everything that's going on in between. And so if we serve a God who knows the beginning and the end, why would we not seek after him? Why is it 
that, that we go to our coworkers? Why, why is it that we seek the Psychic Friends Network? Why is it that, that we seek man when, 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 when the person who has the full plan for our life is readily available to us? Why is it, sir or ma'am, that, that, that you're continuing to, to seek approval, that you're, you're continuing to seek direction from somebody other than the true and living God? Why is it that you continue to be frustrated over the fact that you're not getting the answers that you're looking for when you're not looking to the right person to get the answers that you're seeking? Why is it that the people at the drugstore, why, why is it that, that, that the street pharmacist is your go-to person instead of going to a true and a living God? Why is it? Why is it? that you continue to live in a state of frustration? Why is it that you continue to live in a state of agitation when God is like, hey, 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 I'm right here. I, I, I'm the same God who, who, who kept you when, 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 when you almost lost your life. I, I'm the same God who kept you that night when you should have been dead and gone. I'm the same God who kept you when, when, you, when you thought you were going to lose your mind. And if I'm that same God, why would you not? Why would you not trust me to keep you now? Why, why, why would you not lean into me to keep you now? When, when, when you were strung out on drugs and you were looking for somebody to take care of you, when you were almost standing on death's door and I came and I saved you, why would you not trust me to keep you now? When your bills were, were behind and, and the lights were in fear of being cut off, when, 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 when you were uh, sitting at the mental institution wondering whether or not you had a sane state of mind, the same God who kept you is the same God who wants to keep you now. God knows the full plan that he has for you. It, it says it in, in verse number 11, for surely I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Now, 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 if I know that God has a full plan for me, uh, logic would say to me that I need to continue to press into and I need to continue to be in relationship and I need to continue to be in connection with the God who knows where I'm going. And so if that's the case, then why is it that you are frustrated over the fact that God is not moving in the way that you want him to move? Why are you frustrated in the way that God is not doing what he wants you to do? Newsflash, this is not Burger King. You cannot have it your way. When, when, when you trust in an all-knowing and an all-powerful God, what you are saying is, God, I relinquish control and give it to you. God, God, I want you to show up. I want you to show out in my life. God, I need you to do some things for me because I feel like I'm losing my mind. Who am I talking to this morning? For that person who pondered whether or not you wanted to take your life last night, God knows the plan that he has for you. For that person who was convinced that the only way that you are going to get your bills taken care of is by opening up your legs to somebody who doesn't love you, God has a plan for you. For that person who is frustrated about everything that is going on, who, who is agitated and irritated about everything that is going on in the world, what God is saying to you, sir and ma'am, is that I know the plans that I have for you. But will you stick to the plan? Now, see, for, for many of us, we, we oftentimes end up uh, uh, getting ourselves caught up, right? Because he, here's the reality. We ask God, we go before God, Lord, Father, God, in the name of Jesus, help me. You know, give me direction. Give me, give me uh, uh, where I need to go. Give me what it is I need to do. God, put people on my place, right? And, and God, being the God who he is, actually does that, right? And so here we are. God is pouring into us. God is giving us what we need. And what is it, the first thing that we do? We want to go run and tell somebody. Now, God has, God's only given us 20% uh, of the plan, but we're going out telling people like we got 100% of the plan. And then we get discouraged when people start questioning us about what God is saying when God hasn't even given us the total story yet. Stop talking. Stop trying to tell people and convince people of what God is doing within you and sit and listen to what God is saying so that he can give you the full scope of what's going on. We run in the tell folks, oh, look at what God is doing with me. 
We're running with half of the story when God is like, sit, be quiet, listen to what I have to say to you. There is something I'm trying to put in your spirit. There's something I'm trying to put in your mind. There's something I'm trying to put in your heart. But if you would just shut your mouth and listen, I may be able to help you to get to where you need to be. Some of us need to tell people, just be quiet, stop talking. God is working in me. God, God is doing something new in me. God is speaking to my heart and to my mind. And I can't listen to you right now because you're distracting me from hearing what it is that God wants for me. Oh, what, what would it look like in, 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 in your finances? What would it look like in, in your mental state? What would it, it look like at your house if you got to the place where you pray, God, remove all distractions out of my way? God, I rebuke everybody who is speaking against me. God, I rebuke that spirit of disobedience. God, I rebuke that spirit of rebellion. God, I rebuke that spirit of, of confusion that is trying to set its way in my path. God, I need you to speak to me because I know that you know the full plan that you have for me. God's plan is free. You don't have to pay nobody. You don't have to sleep with nobody. You don't have to uh, kill nobody. The plan that God has for you, sir, is full and free. It's available to you. The question is, will you stick to the plan? Will you, will you allow God to meet you where you are? Will you allow God to minister to you where? Will you allow a, a true and a living God to show you who he is? God knows the full plan that he has for us. The second reason we need to stick to the plan is because God knows the outcome of the plan. And I see for many of us, as I said, we, we're so quick to run with 10% with, with of the plan and God is like, there's a whole 90% that I haven't even given you yet. There, there's some things that you need to go through. There, there's some processes that you need to go through. There's some refining that needs to happen in your life so that God can get you to the place where he wants you to be so that you can be all that he has called you to be. The reality is, sir or ma'am, the, 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 there are many who didn't make it in this season. There are over 100,000 people who did not make it out of COVID-19. But if you are still here, God has a purpose and a plan for you. Don't get it twisted. That, oh, I'm immune from COVID-19. No, you're not. No, you're not. I, I'm, a, I'm immune. Oh, I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm one of the ones who made it. Yes, you are one of the ones who made it. But the, the question is, why did God spare your life? What is it that you're supposed to be doing in this season? What is it in the next season and the season after that and the season after that that God has for you? Why is it that God has spared your life and allowed you to be here? Why? For what? Obviously, if you are here, obviously, if God still has you living and breathing, there is a reason and there is a purpose and there is a calling that God has on you. And, and I just wonder in my sanctified imagination, what would it look like if you got to the place where you recognized that God had a call on your life? What, 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 what would it look like? And you're finding, what, what would it look like at your job if you went in there on a Zoom call and knew who you were? What, 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 would, what would it look like in, in your finances, in, in this season? where people are losing things left and right. What would it look like in your life if you got to the place where you recognize who your daddy was? I'm not talking about your natural daddy. For many of us, our natural father may not have been there. And let me just uh, uh, sit here for a minute and, and, and address some issues, right? We family, we talk about family issues. For many of us, the reality is because of our horizontal relationships, we oftentimes assume that it's the same thing in our vertical relationships. Uh, you, you may say, well, what, what, what do you mean by that preacher? Just because your daddy wasn't present, your, 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 your earthly father wasn't present, does not mean that your heavenly father is going to be absent. Just because your husband may have defamed you or your wife may have tore you down in the physical nature does not mean that God does the same thing. See, that, that, that's, that's where we oftentimes get it twisted. Because man doesn't love me, that means God can't love me either. That, that's a lie from the pit of hell. 
Because the God I serve loves you in spite of your mess. Despite who you slept with last night, despite what you smoked this morning, despite what you ate this morning, despite your issues, despite your attitudes, despite your triflingness, God still loves you. Yeah, he loves you. Mm -hmm. You, yeah, yeah, you. No matter how bad you think you are, no, 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 no matter what you, what you think you've done, no, no matter how unlovable that you think that you are, the true and the living God loves you just for you. He loves it. the hair on your head, the lack of hair on your head. He loves your waist circumference. He loves your foot odor. He loves everything about you. Why? Because he created you in his image. Oh, that we would have a church who understood what it means to be created in the image of God. Oh, if we had a church who understood that they are called by a true and a living God. Oh, that we had a church who understood what it means to walk in the power and the authority of a true and a living God. I don't know about you, but I don't serve a dead God. No, indeed. Ain't nothing dead about the God that I serve. Ain't, ain't, ain't nothing dead about the power that God has in my life. Ain't nothing dead about the power that God manifests day after day after day after day. What would it look like in your life, sir? What would it look like in your life if you understood that you were a child of God? What would it look like in, in, in your mental health if you operated like you were a child of God? What would it look like in your physical nature if you understood that you serve a true and a living, a living, not a dead, a living God, what would it look like? If you understood that God knows the outcome in the plan for you, no matter how uncomfortable it is in this season, no matter how, many, how often that the bill collectors are dialing your number, no matter how often the termination letters come in the mail, what the Spirit of God is saying to us today, what the Spirit of God is encouraging us today, is that we've got to stick to the plan. We, we tried everything. We tried, we tried the drugs. We tried alcohol. We tried the sleeping around. We tried uh, stealing. We tried lying. We tried deceiving. And God is like, hey, stick to the plan that I have for you. Trust the plan that I have for you. In the moments where you can't uh, see me, trust me. In the moments where you don't like me, trust me. In the moments where it's uncomfortable, trust me. In the moments where you want to give up, trust. Trust the plan. Because in the plan, there is fullness of joy. In the plan, there is restoration. In the plan, there is wholeness. In the plan, there is a future. And in the plan, there is a hope for you. We have to understand that God knows the full plan. We have to understand that God knows the outcome to that plan. And, and, and check this out. And this, this, this is good news for somebody. The plan is for your welfare and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. God does not want to hurt you, sir. God does not want to harm you, ma'am. God wants to give you a future and a hope. God's plan is not to destroy you, sir. God, God's plan is not to tear you down, man. God's plan is to give you a future and a hope. What would it look like in, in your life if you begin to operate like you had a future and a hope in God? What would it look like at your job? What would it look like in your household? All those spirits that you're battling against, all those spirits that are trying to come and get you, what would it look like in your life if you went into your house and opened up your door and was like, I live in a place where there is a future and a hope and we will live like that? <clears throat> what would it look like in your spiritual journey if you got to the place where you understood that God had a plan for your life? It, does, it doesn't matter how bad you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter who you've been with. It doesn't matter what people have said about you. God has a plan for your life. What would it look like in your spiritual journey? Well, how different would your life, how, how less attitudinal would you be? 
Would you smoke less? Probably. Would you drink less? Probably. Would you be less attitudinal? Yes, you would. Because you understand that there is a purpose and there is a calling for your life and you would not dare disrespect the true and the living God in a way that does not honor the fact that he gave you another breath to breathe. There's many people who went to bed last night who didn't wake up this morning. That's a fact. But if God has spared you to see another, if God has allowed you to get up out of the bed of your own free will, if God has allowed you to be able to get out and walk, if God has allowed you to have resources, if God has allowed you to, to be here on this earth, there is a reason for that. It's not for nothing. But you gotta be willing, sir. You gotta be willing, ma'am, to stay on the plane. And the last thing that I want to point out to us today is that God gives us clear instructions on how to implement the plan. Now, I will openly admit, I oftentimes have a hard time following instructions. Hello, my name is McKessa, and I have problems following instructions. I'm not ashamed of it. It's something I'm a work in progress. It's something that I constantly have to work toward. But I acknowledge my limitations, and I ask God, God, fix me. I know I'm messed up. I know I got my issues. I know I got my problems. God, I'm the chief sinner in the church. God, help me to be a better person. God, give me instructions on what it means to be a Christian. God, help me be a godly parent. God, help me be a godly spouse. God, help me to be a godly uh, a daughter. God, help me to be a godly leader. And in that, God will give you the instructions that you need. It says in verse number 12 and verse number 13, then when you call upon me, and come and pray to me, I will hear you. Now, now see, for many of us, we, we get it twisted and, and hear the latter part of that verse, I will hear you without hearing the fact that we have to call upon God and we have to pray to him, which means there's some action that has to take place in order for me to get the result that I'm looking for. And so if you are not hearing from God, the question is, are you praying? Are you seeking after God? Are, are you listening to God? Or are you so wrapped up in the foolishness that's around you? that you can't even hear what God is saying to you? Are you so busy getting wrapped up in, 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 in mess? Are you so busy getting wrapped up in foolishness? Are you so busy getting wrapped up in what people say to you that you cannot even hear what God is saying to you? The reality is many of us sitting in here today are not even listening to the words that I'm saying because you have so much mess going on in between your two ears. What would it look like in your life if you got to the place where God can speak to you and you move? What, what would it look like in, 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 your, in, your, in your overall well-being, in your wholeness, if you got to the place where you operated where God wants you to be? The good news is for us today is that that's possible. God did not bring you to this place. God did not bring you to this point. God did not allow the pandemic to happen so that you could get this word today so that you can go out and be a change agent for God. What would it look like in your life? if you act like you knew you were a king's kid? What would it look like in your life if you acted like you were somebody? If you stopped believing the lies that the enemy has told you? I don't care what your mother told you. I don't care what your father told you. I don't care what the teachers told you growing up when you were in elementary, middle, and high school. I don't even care what the person who, you, who, who you're sleeping with told you. God has a purpose. God has a plan for your life. God loves you. God wants to be in relationship with you. And God wants more from you than where you are. Verse number 13 goes on to say, when you search me, you will find me if you seek me with your whole heart. We always want the, the outcome, but we don't want to do the work. <clears throat> we always want the reward, but don't want to put in the hard work. And what the Spirit of God is saying to us today is that I have a plan for you. I have an outcome for you. I have laid out for you what it is that you need to do. But the question still, it all really comes down to an individual. I can't answer that question for Pastor Warner. I can't answer that question for uh, uh, Pastor Newman. I can't answer that question for anybody else. I have to ask myself, am I willing to stick to the plan? 
Do I always like the plan? No, I don't. Am I going to be, uh, I love Jesus, praise the Lord, hallelujah every day? No, I'm not. But at the end of the day, if I know that I'm striving towards something, uh, some of us are, are, are walking around aimlessly because we have nothing to strive for. What is it that you're striving for, sir? What is it that you're, what is your motivation? What are you doing with your life? God, what is God speaking to you in this season? We're, we're in the midst of a global pandemic. People are losing their jobs. People are losing their lives. You know, uh, Black Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter, Me Too movement, whatever you want to call it. What is it in this season that God is calling you to do? Why is it that you weren't in the number who died from the pandemic? Why is it that God allowed you to wake up this morning? It's not because you're cute. It's not because you came from the right side of the track. It's not even because you have something to do today. The spirit of God has kept you and sustained you to this point and will keep doing that for such a time as this. So what are you doing? You gonna continue, keep sticking to what you do? You gonna keep making excuses for why it is that you're not doing what God has called you to do? Okay, you can't read like everybody else, so what? Okay, you didn't go to college, so what? Okay, uh, you, you didn't come from the right side of the track, so your mom or your daddy didn't have no money when you grew up, so what? What is God calling you to do? Let, let, let's get to the point where we're moving past making excuses and moving toward hearing the instruction that God has for us. The, the word of Romans 8 and 20, it says, and in this we know that all things are working together. So, so what does that mean? Uh, that, that layoff that you had, that's part of the all. Uh, 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 that, 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 that husband or wife that left you, that's part of that all. Uh, 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 that, that loved one that you lost, uh, unexpectedly, that's part of that all. Because when, when we allow God to get to the point where he is orchestrating our steps, we have the assurity of knowing that all A-L-L -L or A-L-L -L in sign language means A-L-L, -L, all. God desires to be in relationship with you. God desires to lead you. God desires to, to, to direct you. God desires to be in relationship with you. Despite you, God wants to love you. God wants to love on you. God wants to grow you. God wants to walk with you. But the question is, are you willing to stick to the plan? Not your plan, but God's plan. Not your mama's plan, but God's plan. Not your daddy's plan, not my plan, but with the plan that God has for you. Are you willing? You're able. If you have breath in your lungs, that means you're able. If you can open up your mouth, that means you're able. But the question is, are you willing? And, and, the, reality, and the reality is, you know, I'm, I'm all about being realistic. For many of us, we have to answer no. No, I'm not ready. Nope. I'm not trying to get on God's plan. Um, I'm, I know there's a God. You know, I know that he's kept me. I know that he sustained me, but you know what, pastor, I'm just not, I'm not trying to get on the plane right now. And you know what, if that's you, I'm okay with that. Because what, what, what that says to me is the fact that you were here listening and, and hearing and taking in what it is that God is saying means that God has an opportunity to change your heart and mind. So my prayer for you today is if you are not ready, that God will get you to the point where you are ready. Now that may not happen overnight and you don't even have to tell nobody. Don't, don't be going around telling nobody, I'm not ready. I heard what the pastor said, but I'm not ready. Don't nobody need to know that. That's nobody's business but you and God. But the challenge for you today, and the question today is, if you are not ready now, will you be ready? Will you get to the point where you are ready? I believe that even in the midst of not being ready, that if we have a desire to change, then God will honor our request. But you, you, you gotta be willing. I can't, I can't press this on you. I, I can't make you want this. I, I just try to say to you and, and help you understand the power and the anointing and the love that God has for you and ask you the question, why would you not in your right mind come and connect with a God who wants to be in a relationship with you? Why would you not connect with a God who wants to love you? Why would you not connect with a God who even in the midst of your foolishness still wants to be bothered with you? Why? Are you so bound up in your mind? Does the enemy have your mind 
in a way that you can't even receive what God has for you? Are you so tied up in mess and in confusion that you don't even recognize that there's a God who is like, I want to be in a relationship with you? Are you at a place in life where you're not even willing to receive the love that God has for you? You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to go nowhere. You don't have to sleep with nobody. It's free and available to you. But the question is, will you take it? Or will you continue to turn your back on God? Will you continue to reject God and the love that he has for you? Because in reality, when you really look at the totality of your life, that's what you're doing. You're rejecting the love that God has for you. God is like, I'm here. I want to love you. I want to be in a relationship with you. I want to, I want to uh, uh, hold you in those times where, where you feel like you're lost. I want to comfort you in those times where you feel like you're in distress. I want to guide you in those moments where you feel like you have no direction. Will you trust God? Or will you continue? to go in the way that you have been going? Will you continue to make the choice to live in confusion? Will you continue to make the choice to live in frustration? Will you continue to make the choice to live in, 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 in dishonesty and in lying and cheating and stealing? Will you continue to make the choice to reject God when God is standing there saying to you, I'm here, I'm here. I love you, I wanna be with you, I wanna be in a relationship with you. Will you not accept a God like that. You may not. And if you find yourself in that position, my prayer for you today is that as you go throughout the days and the weeks and the months to come, that God will send somebody your way to encourage your heart. God will send a song or send a breeze or send a bird, send something your way to remind you and to get you to the place where you are ready and willing to accept all that God has for you. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, um, accepting God is not an easy task. Saying yes to God opens up doors that the enemy is gonna try to come after you, yes. You thought the enemy was on your trail now, be serious about getting with God and see what happens. But, but, but what I can tell you and what I can share with you is that there's a peace that surpasses all understanding. When, when, when you're in the midst of chaos and confusion, you can stand there with a smile on your face and say, I know that there's a God and that he loves me. I know that there's a God and that he wants to be in a relationship with me. I know that there is a God and he wants to be with me, me, despite of me. And so the question comes, sir, the question comes, man, will you stick to the plan? I know it may be uncomfortable for you. I, I know it may be troubling for you. I know that it may be scary for you, but will you stick to the plan? That, that's, that's the question today. Will, will you take the words of Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 10 through 13? Will you take the words of Romans chapter 8 and 20 and 29? Will you live that out in your life so that you can experience all that God has for you. In, in God, there is fullness of love. In God, there is fullness and, and peace. In God, there is wholeness. And that's what God desires for us. That, that's where God wants us to get to in, in a place where even in the midst of a broken world, God is still moving. Even in the midst of a global pandemic, God is still moving. Even in the midst of riots and protests, God is still moving. Even in the midst of the chaos and the confusion, that you are experiencing in your life, even in the midst of the, the fears and the doubts and the worries and the anxiety that you have, God is still speaking to you. God still wants to be in relationship with you. But the question still becomes and will always be, are you willing? Are you willing to allow God to minister to you? Are you willing to allow God to hold you? Are you willing to allow God to be a keeper and a sustainer for you? Are you willing to give up the mess that God has or the, that the devil tries to bring against you for the fullness of what God has for you? Are you willing to give up the lying and the deceit in order to get to the fullness of what God has for you? Are you willing to trust a true and a living God so that he can direct your path in the way that he would have you to go? Are you willing today? That's only a question that you can answer. I can't answer for you. But as I said earlier, my prayer for those who may say, honestly, I, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not willing. I'm, I'm just not willing. My prayer for you is that God will get you to the place 
where you recognize the value that he has put in you, where you recognize that you are a king's kid. You're not too bad. You're not too, too ugly. You're not too, too far gone. You're, you're, you're not, you're not uh, stupid. You're not dumb. You're not any of that. You are all that God has called and created you to be. The question is, as we continue to, to, to move toward this pandemic, as we continue to march through 2020, will you live up to the calling and, and, the, and the position and, and the desires that God has for you in your life? The good news is, unlike everybody else, I can say with 100%, 100% assurity, 1,000% assurity, that God loves you. God desires to be in a relationship with you. And more importantly, that God desires for you to stick to the plan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.